the dream, he had a lawsuit that came out pretty much saying that he SA'd and trafficked a woman all the way from the Netherlands with the promise that she would become the next Beyonce and Rihanna. Use his power influence and affiliation with these two artists never to put this woman in a situation to where she would even meet them, but to be his slave. And he got sued and very much like Diddy, he denied all the allegations. Please hit the like, please hit the like. Greatly appreciate you guys. Producer known for his work writing hits for Beyonce, Justin Bieber, and many others is sued by a singer claiming he physically and sexually assaulted her. I have the allegations from the lawsuit filed against the dream and what he's saying about it. Thanks for joining me for Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. This lawsuit filed against the dream by singer Shawnee Monroe is like many others I've told you about recently. It's graphic and it contains a lot of detail and allegations of physical and sexual violence mm. against the dream. And I want to be clear, these are allegations at this point. The claims have not been proven by singer Shanaz Mangro, who's known professionally as Shawnee Monroe. Dream is a famous singer, songwriter, and producer. He's written big hits for a number of famous artists, including Justin Bieber, Mariah Carey, Kanye West, Rihanna, and of course, Beyonce. He wrote all the single ladies. And you see how the dream can even use and grift off of these celebrities he worked with in order to establish himself as an authority and make it possible for other people to be affiliated with them. But at the same time, gatekeep those relationships and keep this woman in a subpar situation to where it is a totally different experience. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, this happened every day. What about y'all husbands that's going out there selling dope, pretending that they straight and they f***ing the neighborhood, big punk, huh? That's the same situation here. Beyonce and her most recent, Cowboy Carter. Dream has been nominated for 21 Grammys, and he's won eight. He's kind of a big deal in the music industry. And that is how Shawnee Monroe claims she came to know him. Her lawsuit has the same trigger warning on it that others have had. It's right there on the first page. And get this. The lawyer who represents singer Cassie, the same Cassie who sued Sean Diddy Combs and the suit was settled the next day, is representing Shawnee Monroe. So let's go through the lawsuit. The suit starts with a preliminary statement. It basically has a summary of the allegations. Mm. And then it gets into some claims against the Dream and his record label, Contra Paris and Epic Records. The suit states, his depraved behavior was facilitated by his record label, Contra Paris LLC, as well as by Epic Records, the label Dream convinced to invest in Miss Mangro, mm -mm. despite the fact that he never intended to truly support her career trajectory, but instead wanted corporate funding to assist in his trafficking venture. And, and a lot of people look at Little Rod like he's filing frivolous lawsuits and stuff against Lucy and Gree Edge and Universal Music Group. Now, in the Little Rod lawsuit, he didn't name any predicate acts or any nexus, meaning more than one, two, or any particular thing that connected Lucy and Gree Edge, the money, to more than one instance. Had he been able to say Lucy and Gree Edge was in Miami and then Lucy and Gree Edge was in, in L.A. or wherever else, those are two predicate acts on two different situations. And Lucy and Gree Edge would not be able to be dismissed from the lawsuit because it's two predicate acts. Not saying that there is not another predicate act, but Little Rod was not able to establish Shit. So a lot of times when these record labels and executives are named in these lawsuits for racketeer money laundering, which is a causation, which is a count, a claim under the racketeering law, they need to name it under more than one allegation. And for what I'm hearing is this young lady says that the ticket for her to go from Netherlands to Atlanta was purchased by Epic Records. And then Epic Records also brokered an agreement and gave the Dream and his partner money on behalf of her. Those are two predicate acts. So Epic Records would not be able to escape a lawsuit under the RICO uh, trafficking and stuff because of those two. So that is the distinctive difference between this lawsuit and what LaRod said. Suit says Dream told her that he would make her the next Beyonce and Rihanna. The suit continues. Under the guise of pursuing a legitimate recording and publishing contract with Ms. Mangro, Dream lured the young and vulnerable artist into an abusive, violent, and manipulative relationship filled with physical assaults, violent sexual encounters, 
and horrific psychological manipulation. Mm -mm. Monroe's suit claims the dream told her he would write songs for her and that she'd be the next Rihanna or Beyonce, as I said earlier. But the suit claims, in reality, Dream used Miss Mangrove for his base desires, which manifested in violent sexual acts and vicious psychological torture. Mm -mm. For example, Dream locked Miss Mangrove in a dark room adjacent to a recording studio, violently having sex with her and then leaving her alone naked in the dark for hours on end, returning again to have sex with her and demand that she tell him she loved him. Mm -mm, I wonder if he had some bedroom candy over there in Atlanta. <laughs> Rose says the dream promised her she'd open for Beyonce's upcoming tour and that he forced her to diet and exercise excessively to get prepared for it. But of course, that never happened. According to the suit, this all started back in 2014. Monroe was just 23 years old and working here in the United States on an international visa from the Netherlands. Mm. She was hoping to get her big break as a singer and songwriter. One day, Monroe claims she got a message on Instagram from a member of the Dream's security team asking that she send some of her work to share with Dream's manager. In January 2015, Monroe says Dream and his team flew her to Atlanta. The suit claims Monroe recorded some tracks in his studio for a song. Quote, during the recording session, Ms. Mangrove recorded a verse for the song Transparent, which was supposed to be part of Dream's forthcoming two-part EP, Crown Jewel. While the official release of Crown Jewel was delayed, the song eventually leaked online. Dream failed to give any credit or compensation to Ms. Mangrove for her vocals. Then she claimed she was taken to a basketball game and a strip club. Uh -uh. She was given large stacks of cash to throw at the strippers. Then one of the dancers, she claims, came over to her and laid on top of her, which she said made her uncomfortable. The next day, Monroe's suit says the dream texted her, which signaled to her that she had passed his test. At the end of the trip, Monroe says dream told her he wanted to sign her to his label, which made her feel like all of her hard work had finally paid off. The suit claims that dream used his success with Beyonce and Rihanna to manipulate her. It says, he said Ms. Magro needed to, quote, belong to him so they could become the next Bay and Jay in reference to Beyonce and Jay-Z. Quote, Dream knew how much Ms. Magro loved and admired Beyonce as an artist. He regularly used Ms. Magro's admiration for Beyonce as a way to manipulate Ms. Magro, telling her that the only reason he achieved such great success with Beyonce is because they created a sanctuary together which allowed him to know Beyonce in a way that others could not. Mm -mm. And consequently, he could- I wanna know what sanctuary you can create it with Beyonce. Was y'all burning candles, lights? Were you taking them records to the shrine and putting MK Ultra message, demon possessed? What was you doing behind the music? And they say that Dream knew that Beyonce was pregnant before Jay-Z did. Don't tell me he might be the daddy. Y'all know what he did to Nivea. Him and Mystical did the same thing to Nivea he did to this girl right here. And that killed Nivea's career. Write the best songs for her. The suit continues claiming Dream explained that a sanctuary was even stronger than a spousal connection because it was about art. Being part of a sanctuary with Dream meant that Ms. Mangro was required to disclose all of her secrets and thoughts and become trust partners with him. He said that his relationship with Beyonce was so close that he knew about Beyonce's pregnancy before her husband, Jay-Z. Mm -mm, you finna, uh -uh. true, I wonder if Jay-Z knows Jay -Z, that. Jay-Z, you can't be a man if you sit there and not question those allegations. It's bad enough Kanye West made you look like a bitch about here. But he's talking about your woman's uh, he playing underneath your woman's clothes. Your woman's clothes. Oh, no, nah, we was making music and we was going to surprise you and she had to put it in the music and all of that. I don't care what nobody say. Okay, Beyonce want credibility and she want notoriety for, for when the lights go out at the Renaissance concert, she say something to keep the energy going and now that was so monumental. Ooh, wow. Yeah, right, Dream. Have you been playing underneath Beyonce clothes? We want to know. The suit continues claiming emotional manipulation and coercion by Dream. It includes texts where she said Dream asked her for personal embarrassing information. I'm going to be your better half if this goes where I think it's going. The suit then says Monroe asked for more information about what it meant to be part of his sanctuary. She claims he mm -mm. responded evasively in a text message, quote, I let you know after we win 10 Grammys together. 
right now you just have to be free and let he ain't even got to emotionally. Now, some of what I just mentioned is alleged to have happened after the Atlanta trip when Monroe says she flew to California to record with the dream. Monroe claims she was expecting to get- And he made his expectations for her so far-fetched. He didn't say, I'll let you know when we win a Grammy. He said 10 Grammys. Nigga, you ain't even got 10 Grammys. And you just want 10 with her? Specifically, he gassed her up bad, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what it is with these. He's a super P-word. I'm sorry. Okay, the Biden administration said it back in 1994, and I know he wasn't a president until modern days, but his policies still exist in his thought pattern when him and Hillary Clinton said that black men are super P-words. This is what he was talking about. This is P-word activity. Let's be clear. Super P-word. Reporting contract. And this is when she said the dream forced himself on her sexually in a room at a recording studio. Mm -mm. In the lawsuit, there are some sexually explicit text messages, and they're a little too explicit to talk about here. I'm just not going to say what they say. The suit says, in between sending those text messages, Dream texted Miss Mangro about the recording deals he was working on for her, including, we will have major distribution in about 30 days, so you better be ready. Mm -mm. Dream frequently used this type of manipulation. That's unrealistic. Major distribution in 30 days when you ain't even turning no music to capital, no nothing, and asking them for money. And I, I guess that was the money and the distribution. Uh, it's, it's crazy. The intertwined business promises with violent sex. Mm -mm. And this is all according to the lawsuit, of course. After this, Monroe claims the Dream convinced her to move from the Netherlands to Atlanta. While she was in Amsterdam packing to move, the suit says, On February 19th, 2015, Dream texted Ms. Mangro, You belong to me now. I'm your mother and father and everything. You One know what? The groom becomes the, the groom does the grooming. That's the same thing that Diddy said to J, uh, D, uh, Justin Bieber when he was 15. That's the same thing Diddy said to Cassie. That's the same thing that was said to me. But see, the thing about it is before I came to Hollywood, I was already used to dealing with people like this and not put myself in situations because I was a go-go I was a go-go dancer in South Florida, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So I seen the worst of the worst. So by the time I came to LA, I'm like, uh, I'm, mm -mm, I'm finna get what I need to get in. So I never put myself directly in a situation like this because I know where to maneuver and what not to do. And because of that, I've lost out on a lot of opportunities, connections with a lot of different people. I got the stories with different celebrities that y'all know and praise and worship that I can tell you are some of the most nastiest, evil people. But secrets are a big commodity. Secrets are the best commodity in Hollywood, right? Diddy stayed in that position because he got all these secrets about everybody else. So I'm going to use my secrets to bargain and negotiate for opportunity because I know how to avoid this and can't nobody say that I'm a victim of theirs at all. Once in Atlanta, Monroe claims she was kept in a residence inn and basically isolated with the dream coming to her room whenever he wanted to. She claims she had to beg to go to the mm, 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 mm. recording studio. When she asked the dream if she could go to the studio, he would chastise her and call her a brat. He would tell her that she had to stop thinking about only herself, that we, he was an important producer who was working with a lot of important people, and that he did not have time for her, quote, nagging. And never not once did he put her in the studio next to uh, Engineer, next to Beyonce, next to Rihanna, never not once. Uh, Rihanna, they say she can't sing. Never not once did he put her in a situation to do the backup vocals for Rihanna to move and maneuver from there. Never not once. I mean, people get contracts, people get deals, and people get clout. Like uh, the girl D. Woods, the reason she was chosen to be a part of Danny Kane is because she came with a previous resume. We didn't know who she was, but she was singing background vocals for Ciara. So you mean to tell me this girl singing background vocals for Rihanna, she's not going to take off? I mean, for God's sake, we all, black people that is, love B.B. Rexa when we found out that she sung the background vocals for Rihanna during Monster. And I was like, oh, so I love her. Right? So never not once did he ever want her to win. About getting into the studio. The suit continues. It was not at all what Ms. Mangro expected after being in the studio nonstop during her first visit to Atlanta and Los Angeles. Everything felt different once she committed. And everything that this lady is saying, Dream did to Nivea. Okay? But the thing is, Lil Wayne kind of allegedly groomed Nivea for that to happen. 
Then with mystical, it, it, excuse me, it was mystical, and mystical allegedly groomed Nivea for that. The same Negro that unalived his allegedly unalived his sister um, for record deals for money. The same Negro that's been charged and waiting to go to trial for S A and battery holding a hairstylist account a, a hostage. They're saying that Nivea always was scared. That's why when you see the video for Danger been so long, the only portion of the video she's in is on the stage with a whole bunch of people. The, the, the beauty scenes and the intimacy scenes, Nivea refused to do that with Mystica because he had basically allegedly already SA'd her and coerced her to be in this situation. Now, this girl was around Dream connected to Beyonce and Rihanna for years and, and we didn't know nothing about her until this lawsuit. So what do you think the dream did to Nivea that she was that was already happening to her allegedly, right? See, I'm the type of nigga because I was the go-go dancer before I got to Hollywood. I'm the type of nigga that'll take their motherfucking wallet, smooth ooze them, take all their motherfucking money, talk shit to them and tell them to go to the ATM and come back when you have some more or don't talk to me. <laughs> to living in Atlanta and was under Dream's complete control. In May 2015, Monroe described sexual assaults she claimed she endured at the hands of the Dream. In one instance, she said she was taken to a movie theater where another man was present and forced to have sex in front of him. Mm -mm. In another, Monroe described an assault in a van. Once in the van, Dream locked the doors and pushed Ms. Mangro into the dark back area of the van. He pinned her on the mattress in the van, took off her clothes, and started forcibly having sex with her. Monroe says that the dream choked her, telling her, you're mine. At times, her mouth and nose were covered and she couldn't breathe. Mm -mm. After this, Monroe said she signed a record deal with Contra Paris. And it's Al like, this is crazy. The only, I mean, you know, being in the LGBT, I'm bisexual, right? I don't, I can never do to women what I do to men. I just would not feel the same way. So he, the way he doing her, he might as well hit some poppers or something. That's the only way that that shit sounds sexy. You hit some goddamn poppers and get that bitch inebriated. But they say that pink cocaine been flowing around Hollywood. Dream probably had that girl on pink cocaine. <laughs> Epic Records. She says she got $35,000 as an advance for all of the work she had done for the prior five months. <laughs> well, the Dream and one of his friends got $150,000 each. I want to take a short break from telling you about this. Nah, lawsuit. we good. We good on this ad, Primo. We good on this. Let's get back to the lawsuit. Fortune, stardom, and then she ends up with absolutely nothing. Yeah, I, it was definitely a compelling complaint that I read. She provides a lot of details on the sexual battery, the sexual assault, and obviously the, the trafficking, trafficking aspect of it. She was a resident of the Netherlands when um, the dream allegedly first reached out to her and she Stardom. moved to the U.S. Then... in order to pursue this musical dream that seemed to turn into what many would consider to be a nightmare. Yeah, her allegations certainly do sound like a nightmare. And at these, this point, they are simply allegations. Uh, what I found interesting about this, and maybe... So we have, I don't believe them, them. Them are factual allegations. I think it's important for law and crime, any person, the lead attorney, to understand the difference between factual allegations and allegations. And allegations is upon information and belief, this person said this and this person said that. And now it's a factual allegation until it's proven because now you need to call that person who said whatever else to substantiate that and make it and convert it into a fact. But he flew her from the Netherlands using Apple Records money. That is a fact. That is a fact to be proven. He, to be proven based upon the receipts, the way it's shaped, the way it reads, is that I have the receipts to prove this. It doesn't say upon information and belief. I ain't seen nothing that said upon information and belief in that lawsuit. These are factual allegations. So a Rule 12B motion is not going to substantiate because essentially a Rule 12B motion says, so what? I admit that everything in this lawsuit is true, but I don't deserve to be held accountable based on this. This is how Lucy and Gree Edge and Universal get out of the Little Rod lawsuit because they could not name and, and plead at least two times when there was an a, a, a SA party and, and an exchange of money for these parties where Lucy and Gree Edge and Universal representatives were actually present. He was better off suing Christine, Diddy's chief of staff. He didn't, you know, that's why she's not dismissed from the lawsuit, but to each his own. So I just wanted to point that out.
she just reached out uh, to Douglas Wigdor, but Douglas Wigdor and his firm, they're the same lawyers who represent, who represent Cassie, um, represented her in her lawsuit against Sean Combs, are cu currently representing her as she cooperates with the feds. What does that signal to you that Douglas Wigdor took this complaint or took her on as a client? Does that give this complaint any more weight? Yeah, I think that it is an interesting fact that she is using the same lawyers that a number of other individuals who are su suing some high profile celebrities um, have also used. Douglas Wigdor and the Wigdor law firm is a, a well known law firm that typically brings these types of, of suits. So it's not unusual for them to have a client in this space. Um, that being said, they do have their pick of, of clients. So it does signal to me that there must be some evidence of, of what she um, has alleged in this complaint. But it also um, indicates to me that she did her homework um, and yeah. is aware of perhaps some of the other claims that are out there right now and has figured out which lawyers they are using. Now, I've been referring to her just by her professional name. Um, obviously, she has her legal name. Um, but Shawnee Monroe, uh, you know, she claims that she got involved with the dream. She had this she had this desire to to be the next Beyonce. And he told her he could make that happen for her. According to everything she's saying, she finally gets a record deal. She gets a thirty five thousand dollar advance, which sounds absurd to me when the dream and one of his cohorts got $150,000 each. She says she's, uh, you know, taken back to Atlanta. She's in the studio ever so often. She's having to like buy um, the crew champagne and cupcakes. And she has to do all these lavish things where she has like no budget to do this. She films a music video. She thinks everything's going to go okay. She's working with Epic Records. And L.A. Reid, who's a big, big deal, he's a big wig in the music industry, mm -hmm. um, she thinks she finally gets away from the dream and she's working with other people. And L.A. Reid is connected to Usher, Jay-Z, excuse me, Usher, uh, Diddy, Justin Bieber, you know, <laughs> it's just hitting too close to home. I just feel like Hollywood needs a hard reset and once that's well recognized no matter what mistake what i did i'm the primary person that should be running hollywood right now i'm the star i'm the celebrity i'm the outspoken one i'm the one who's not controlled by corporate contracts they could do business with me to restructure how they see and do business with celebrities so i see opportunity in all of this let me be clear about that and then she finds out they've dropped her like he was holding according to her holding her music hostage he was not turning her music over to Epic, according to her lawsuit. Mm. So she's left with nothing. And then she just has to go home empty handed. Um, Crazy. You know, these are some really serious, serious allegations. Even the money that he paid her, she was telling her that she needed to buy gifts and everything for the people around to leave her des in destitute, a destitute situation. Yeah, we, we just got paid one hundred and eighty thousand dollars off of you we're going to give you thirty thousand so two hundred and twenty thousand what was it one hundred and ten thousand dollars each so that's 220 plus the thirty thousand that's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to support you and now i'm gonna find ways as the dream to get the thirty thousand up off of you so that i could turn around and support you and not knowing that i'm buying you chanel bags and all this other stuff with one hundred and ten thousand dollars or the $220,000 that me and my partner split. That's trafficking. That's money laundering. And if true, it makes you wonder, how often does this happen in the music industry? Yeah, that's how I walked away from the complaint. I was really shocked at how she compared some of her treatment and getting into the industry to what some of the greats um, musical artists that we all know, like Beyonce and Rihanna, potentially also had to experience in order to make it. Um, if you read the allegations as being true, um, this is a pattern and practice um, in this industry, which is pretty disturbing. Post Me Too movement, um, one would like to think that you know stories like this are very isolated and far and and few. But it really seems like a lot of people had to be involved and, and know about this individual who was obviously trying to get noticed 
and was really. Thrilled. But we, the public, didn't know her. All of these executives. That's what I be trying to tell y'all, bitch. I'm all, I'm already lit in Hollywood. These motherfuckers know I got their secret. They know who I am. They know what it is. And when I roll up on them, bitch, I, what's up? What's good? I need. I mean, I'm a different person. But I swear to God, people be in Hollywood for years before y'all know who they are. I'm younger than Denzel Washington before he broke out. And I got a resume that's greater than Denzel Washington by the time he broke out. So I still feel hopeful and aspirational. Maybe it wasn't supposed to happen when I was a heartthrob, even though I'm still a heartthrob. You know what I'm saying? ...ordered by a lot of the male figures that controlled um, who was actually played and what music was actually rights were given to them. Um, it's, it, it was it was very disturbing and, and, and sad to read. And obviously these are only allegations and and Dream is, is vehemently denied. Of course. Um, all of this. But um, considering her plight and, and, and where things are and the fact that she's brought this complaint, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how the facts play out here. Of course. Exactly. And I'm glad that this this is a very smart attorney. Um, you know, she said it'd be it would be interesting considering the fact how the facts play out here. She knows that everything that's pleaded in this complaint is a factual allegation. I didn't see upon information and belief, yada 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 yada. When y'all see that in a lawsuit, that's cold words for I, I can't prove it without this is my information and belief. I need to go in during the discovery phase to depose. And ask questions to substantiate this paragraph in the lawsuit. <laughs> that lawsuit was a, as a matter of fact, this happened, this happened, that happened, that happened. The only person who's presenting facts, factual allegations like that that's coming into question is Tyrone Blackburn. And I do feel like it is a situation of racism. I do feel like it is a situation of uh, elitism, um, given the fact that Cassie went to the same lawyer who filed this lawsuit against the dream. If this woman would have went towards Tyrone Blackburn, the court and the, the not only the judicial system, but even the court of public opinion might look at it sideways. I don't know if it's because it's Tyrone Blackburn black or he's just suing so many different people, and listening to so many different people just come up with allegation and they're trying to form a, def a, a discrediting campaign against him. I mean, I even seen them file a motion to. Uh, or the court do something in the electronic system and say, hey, this this document isn't filed. It isn't signed. Anytime you start seeing the court intervening into the pleading stage to make sure, oh, this is signed and this box is not checked. And you got three, four days to submit this to the court with this box. That's letting you know that the court don't like you. OK, I know that firsthand. But at the end of the day, you know, Tyrone Blackburn, what he got going on, his whole M.O. is to let me settle this and get the money. I don't think he ever intended on going to trial. I don't think he ever intended on doing anything but getting more and less, more clout than Tasha K or whatever the case may be. But this girl, she was smart. She did her research. She seen that this lawyer with the same law firm set up a lawsuit with Diddy 30 plus million dollars. And if somebody's coming at me with Diddy lawsuit and I'm the dream, oh no, I got to settle this because everything she said, they done a thorough investigation. They made a big billionaire like dreams. Uh, Diddy settle. I got to settle because this is going to drag me. This is going to remind me of what's happening to Diddy. Why the whole time Tyrone Blackburn is clout chasing off of what this law firm did in order to get his quota and his name up. You know, let's be clear. That's what it's about. Uh, yeah, the dream. Of course you denied it. But when you settle it, we're going to look at everything that you did and said in that goddamn lawsuit as true. We don't care because you settled it. And just because you settled it don't mean you innocent. We don't believe you. Black people, especially not black women, they don't believe you. Black women go through this shit every day. They looking for an opportunity in a Negro to put all of their pain and shit into And you did this to a white girl. So not only the black people coming after you, but the white people is too. There's no bunnies. Okay, we know we need Nivea to come on out and wonder why you got by 10, 13 children from the dream. Was it just like Chanel Mungro where he was locking you up in a dark place, pumping them babies in you, mad because you was on birth control, told you not to take it and got all these kids? Okay, it's good. It's 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 bad enough. Uh, Chili did it with Dallas Austin to get some of them goddamn TLC checks that she wasn't getting just because she connected to Dallas to use the child for the money. Now, Nivia, come on out about your story. Your kids there and they're grown at this point in time. We want to see you do an interview. Tasha K, can you interview Nivia since she over there in Atlanta, Georgia, and know some of the same scam artists that y'all know? 
Please and thank you. We want a real celebrity, somebody like Nivea, and we don't want her to sit there and look like Ricky Smiley, alleged baby mom with that child to child do that she usually wear. We want to see Nivea. We want to hear what Mystical did to you. We want to hear what the dream did to you. We want you to substantiate. Or is you going to stick by this Negro because you got kids with him? Your kids are damn near grown. And Lil Tuncha said he should have told you. He warned you. And, and he stopped dealing with you because you went over there with the dream. And the dream looked like a Bata boy. 